Welcome, and thanks for joining us today. You're listening to the Women's Broadcast Television Expert Spotlight Show, and I'm your host, Shavon. WBTVN is the all-women's internet television station with content that's created by women and for women. We are really happy today because we have another expert with us that's going to be chatting and giving us some good hints on how to heal, to get balanced, all of those great things. So let me tell you just a little bit about her. Gail Alexander, and here's what she has to say. She says, bring yourself into alignment, balance, and harmony with your own healing abilities. We all have the ability to listen to ourselves and to heal ourselves. The readings assist with building trust in yourself and how you work, learn, and grow to become the most authentic, genuine vision of you. Gail, we are so happy to have you. Welcome to WBTVN TV Spotlight Show. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here as well. So what I wanted to ask you is that it's always really interesting, I think, to the audience, certainly uh, to me and anybody that's listening, to, to really find out what was your childhood like and how did you get to where you are today? So we want to hear all the details, good and bad. Right. Ugly and ugly and 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 possibilities. All you know, all of those those things, good, bad, and ugly. We all have that in our lives. So, but they form who we are. So that's what we want to learn about you. Okay. Well, actually, that story is in my first book that I wrote, but uh, called "I Don't Know How I Know I Just Know." But I was very psychic as a child. Apparently, when I was about four or five, I told my parents that my grandfather was going to die of a major coronary, and then two weeks later, he died. My mom had had a stillborn and said that the baby was really sick in the hospital. And I said, no, it's not. It's in heaven already. Why are you not being honest with us? Wow. So I, I was very, very psychic. And then like most kids who don't know what to do with it and freaked everyone around me out, I learned to shut it all off and went through a period of about 20 years where I didn't get any messages. And then uh, started to come back when I was in grad school. My grandfather, who was the one who died when I was five, I was doing my internship for eating disorders and was sitting across from me in the room. Wow. And that was to tell me that my other grandfather was having a heart attack that day. Wow. I mean, I can, you know, I, I can really see where having that kind of talent, because I've been around it, um, have it in the family, you know, that kind of thing. And it's kind of like, are you kidding me? That's not going to happen. And sure enough. Or something that you just told, told because, you know, one of the things that I've learned in life is that we all have messages and people are brought into our lives to, for us to either deliver a message or for us to receive it. And we don't even know that. Sometimes we're just, we're not even open to it because we don't really understand it. And we just, you know, kind of have disbelief where that, those kinds of things. And then when it comes true, it's even worse because it's like, oh my goodness, that person's really kind of like not normal, right? So we're going to stay away from her. Yeah. You know, it was funny. Um, somebody else may be interviewing you or whatever. I think their first kind of reaction, understanding, you know, uh, about who you are and, and what you do and how well you do it, what an expert you are in it, might be like, oh, my goodness, she's going to be talking to me. To, I'm going to, you know, I'm doing this interview. I wonder what she really thinks, <laughs> you know? And there's a lot to that. I just did a radio interview the other night and he asked me to do an Akashic record reading online and I don't think he was prepared for what came out. Really? I'm not one to hold things back. I mean, I can say things in a way that are very positive and help you move forward. But if you need to work on something, I'm gonna tell you, you need to work on something. Or I wanna something tell you, you're my kind of girl because I, I'm that girl that if you don't address things, you can't solve anything. And it doesn't mean it's going to go in your favor. I just, you know, I want to put that out there. Because it's not about that. It's about healing. And it's about getting it out in the open so that you have uh, an agreement to disagree with each other. But it, it's not an issue anymore. You can lay down those bricks and you can, you can move on. 
in spite of the fact that you don't have to have every single thing in your life as far as harmony and the way that you think or look at something. People have the right to do that on their own because they have different experiences. They have different parents. They have all of these different things that shape who they are at that moment in time. And we grow. And what's really interesting is having the wisdom and the intelligence to allow people to grow and to be able to meet them where they are and not keep putting the brands on them as you know what they were like in, in, in school. I'm sure some of the people would look back with you telling that story and say, oh my God, she was kind of weird to be around because she knew too much about all of us. <laughs> you know, we didn't want to hear it. Uh, so, you know, but then they grew up and they go, boy, I wish she was around me now because I want to know what's going on in my life. So it can be two-sided sword. Yes, I am a therapist by day, and right now I work with adolescents, and they all kind of know. We don't talk about it, but they give me nicknames every now and then. My latest nickname is Guru Gail. Oh, just, my you just know stuff, and I'm like, hmm, maybe yes, maybe no. That is so. That is so cool. So tell me, okay, so we talked about growing up and some of that siblings. You know what you you were saying. Now you're through school. What drove you to do what you're currently doing today? Um, do you see some transformations, obviously, that you want to share? Because I think that I have a ton of them. I, every day, you know, is a new day, and transformations happen all the time. People just don't even realize it. So one of the other things that I do is I create energy mandalas, and it's a very funny story how that came about. <laughs> okay. I was taking an opening to intuition course, and the teacher said that we were going to make gift mandalas for each other. And I threw the biggest temper tantrum that you've ever seen. I held the whole class up for 45 minutes saying, you can't make me draw. This is stupid. I don't want to do this. I have no artistic ability. And then I haven't stopped drawing since. Oh my goodness. So you were, at, how old were you at that age? Uh, 30 something. <laughs> oh, really? I was going to say uh, a young girl needing to no. <laughs> get control of uh, her emotions. You know, it's the hardest thing to do though, when we don't feel that we're good at something, it's, we pull back. You know, I've, I've, you know, gone to, to meetings and whatever. And now they're all of a sudden, uh, because they want us to learn something, they're going to give us some pencil and paper and we have to write down things and we have to, I'm a terrible speller <laughs> and I have dyslexia, so it's not the easiest thing, mm -hmm. but people on their own way, learn their own ways to get through things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not like you can't overcome, you just do it differently. Exactly. But put in those situations, all of a sudden you get that knee-jerk reaction that that's not something I'm good at. So thank you. I need to leave and go to the restroom and maybe not come back. Um, but I don't do that. I actually force myself to, to do it. And then I can, you know, feel so good that I got through it. It wasn't half as bad as I thought that it was going to be. So I love that story because I have no drawing ability, you know, whatsoever. I can still get you to draw a mandala. Yeah, exactly. But I love color mm -hmm. and I love art. Um, I, my background is all in dance. So I think that we express those things. I mean, I, I think that I've got a, um, a God's gift. Uh, to music and, and dancing and uh, choreography and even writing. And you would think I wouldn't like to do that because <laughs> it's not the easiest thing for me to do, but I love it. And, um, and I love creating and helping other people to create and to get out of their uh, comfort zones. And I'm sure that you do that all the time because that's all part of, of learning and growing and we need to do that you know to ourselves so so you've painted so you paint now i see the setting behind you and i see pictures are these some of the things that you have huh? <laughs> no i'm i met somebody's house to do the interview it's oh how nice okay so all right well she uh, likes art you must have that in common then so that that's good so what kind of art do you do you do what do you um, do um, the medium I use is colored pencils. Oh, I draw, I draw mandalas. I can draw them for people. I've drawn them for babies coming into the world. I've drawn them for people who've uh, transitioned. I've drawn tattoos for people. 
It's fascinating. It's fascinating. And it's fascinating what people come up with that they want. Mm -hmm. And you kind of go, oh, I wouldn't have expected that, but here we are. That's, that's fabulous. Let's talk about your book. Okay. Which one? <laughs> okay. Now you've done, you've, you've published two or three? Four. Four. Okay. I'm sorry about that. I thought it was less than that. Well, I just want to say congratulations. Your first book, let's talk about that. Okay. So the first book, I don't know how I know. I just know. is kind yeah. of my story. So okay. all the good, the bad, the weird, and the extremely strange things that happened to me. The original title was uh, My Life is a Bad Science Fiction Movie. Okay. And then someone said, I don't know how I know. I just know. And I'm like, well, that makes more sense. And once that title came, then the whole book just fell kind of into it. So yeah. it talks about what I went through as a child and how I shut everything down and all the things that happened to me and then how things started to reopen up. And then I talk about all the weird experiences I've had. And then um, I would do some channelings from different beings and, and then I left the book with four meditations to help balance yourself. Love and it. And anybody that's watching is going, I've got to get it. I need <laughs> it. And I just want to say to you, yes, you do, because I'm sure it's, uh, I feel the same way. So I'm going to do that. Um, and your second book? Uh, the second book is an energy mandala coloring book. Oh, so I love those. Spells. Yes. And the third book is um, <clears throat> energy mandalas created for the world and humanity. So there are different images that I drew for, <clears throat> excuse me, different crises that happened in the world. But I took all of that out because I just wanted people to intuit what to use the images for. Okay. And then the last book is probably my favorite other than the first one. And it's energy mandalas of crystals and stones because I'm obsessed with crystals. So I have a daughter who is, and I have some, and I love them. I, um, you know, there people don't realize that there is different crystals for different things that you want to do that have, one is for balance, you know, one is uh, for patience, one is for energy, one is, I mean, every single one of those has a purpose and a, and, uh, a, a healing aspect to it, you know, behind it. So tell me how you use yours and how do you help your people that you, you know, coach or work with to bring that element into their life? So how I use mine, well, I don't know, collecting or hoarding, I haven't decided. <laughs> so there's a fine line between that. Mm -hmm. um, I use them for different things. I usually wear a crystal necklace of some sort, and my guidance always tells me which one I need on certain days. Like today I have on a Larimar one because it's very gentle. So to do the radio interview, okay. light blue helps your throat. And so it's very gentle, kind of loving energy and has a dolphin presence to it. So they were very specific today when I was putting on which one I was going to wear today. When I work with clients, oftentimes stones will just pop into my head for them. A lot of time, the first stone I tell everyone to get those black tourmaline because it oh. helps clear negativity. Okay. So if you're dealing with a lot of negative people, either carry it in your pocket or put it on your desk or put it in the... Um, the entrance to your office, if you get a pretty big piece, people who are really negative won't be able to cross it. Wow. So I, this is, a, I'm just saying this, okay, but somebody who's married to somebody who's very negative, should we put one in their pocket and not even let them know it or what? <laughs> well, and then the second one I usually tell people to get for themselves is carnelian, which is an orange stone, which helps who you are in the world and being more fully yourself. So those are usually the two I start with. And then depending on what the person's working through, other ones will pop in. Oh, great. 